Dirtle Magic. Thank you for tuning in to Dirtle Magic. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell if you like the content you see here today, and leave a like and share the video with someone you might think is interested. Leaving those likes really helps us out, but another way to help us out is by using our TCG Player affiliate link below. If you're looking for singles, sealed product, or gaming accessories, please consider using our link to support the channel. We also have some playmats at inkgaming.com. Go ahead and hit the link in the description to check those out. Alright, let's grab some spells and dirtle with some magic. Hello everyone and welcome back to Drill Magic. Today we're playing another game of Keza or Kaza Royal Chaser. Looking at our opening hand, three lands, I think we can deal with that. Drawn to some more perhaps, let's go ahead and keep it. So it made only a slight change from the deck from last time. I took out the Shark Typhoon, dropping a six mana enchantment that does something that doesn't do anything rather. At six in this deck is not the best. So went ahead, took that out, put in Curse of the Swine for some more removal and we'll see how that goes. Since this deck has been remade a bunch since the last time we did the series, uh, and this is the last part of this particular series for Kaza. Please remember to look in the description for that deck list if you want to check it out. It'll be in a link below. Our commander is a blue-red 1-2 legendary human wizard. Following in haste, tap the next instant sorcery spell you cast this turn. Cost X less to cast where X is the number of wizards you control as the ability resolves. Again, they can kill your wizards or you can create wizards in response to that to get a lesser or greater boon because it counts them both on when it's activated and on resolution. Our first opponent with a snow-covered swamp into play is Meryl Nar. I think I just faced this the other day. Three black black for a legendary rat rogue, in case you need rogues. Two, three, all rats have fear. Tap, sacrifice a rat. Create X, one, one black rat creature tokens where X is any number of rats you control. Our next opponent, an arid mesa, cracked after into play. Sacred foundry tapped into play. Let's see who they are. Hactos the Unscarred. I've seen this once before only. Red, red, white, white. 6 1 human warrior. Attacks each combat fable, and when it enters the battlefield, choose 2, 3, or 4 at random as protection from each converted mana cost other than the chosen number. That will be interesting. Swamp into play for our last opponent, but it comes over to our turn, so we will just let that go for now. Temple of Epiphany into play. Let's see what we scry. Is that Guildgate? I'm going to actually leave that on top because we're going to need more lands here, and we'll pass it off. So our last opponent is Xaranth San the Trickster. Three blue black for legendary 4-4 Mirfolk Road Rogue, sorry. Flash. Two blue black. Return unblocked attacking rogue. You control the owner's hand. Put this into your or from your hand onto the battlefield tapped in attacking. Whenever it deals common damage to a player, that player may put or you may put target permanent card from that player's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. So it has like quasi ninjutsu, but it does have to be from your hand. So that's a little bit unfortunate. Over to Meryl Nar, they've been doing some things. Burglar Rat into play, each opponent discards a card. Good thing we went and got that land, I suppose, but do we want to discard the land? I think right now Blue Sun Zenith is kind of far out of the way, and I want to keep the copying from Expansion Explosion. So we'll discard Blue Suns. Over to Hactos. So we have a good smattering of stuff today. I assume Meryl Nar is going to be all the rats all the time. Prismatic Vista into play and cracked for the Hactos player. Expensive mana base so far in Hactos, at least if you're in paper. Planes into play. Boral Signet coming down for Hactos. So next turn, probably their commander. Should be interesting. Over to Zareth. Interested to see what that deck's going to be about. Orzov and Force are coming down. Another rogue. Death Touch 1-2. It does have Aftermath, so at least it's good block fodder. Comes our turn, we get these at Guildgate. Uh, I don't really want to risk anything now without a follow-up play for Nabon. And we don't have one, so let's go ahead. Is at Guildgate, pass it off to our opponents. Ayara, first of Lothwain, into play for the Meryl Nar player. So, we got some Aristocrats going on, all kinds of other things. It's going to be a uh, not quite all rats deck, but that's a nice change of pace. Ooh, Hushbringer. That's going to be real bad for us for some of our ETBs. A lot of our combos depend on that, so I think for now we'll leave it in play, but we'll see how it, ha how, uh, you know, it kind of ends up going. Also, I have an Arcane Signet down for Hactos. Hushbringer is a card I was considering for our Gen Arcanum Weaver. That deck has become somewhat really difficult to build. Let me know if you have any uh, comments on that. I could use some help. Nothing but land in play for Zareth. Comes to our turn, we get a mountain. Let's go ahead and play it. Still don't have anything really to cast, so I suppose we can cast our commander and then just keep the commander up in the red for a braid in case we really need it. 
All right, commander into play. Let's pass the turn. Reliquary tower into play for the Maranar player. Followed by Species Specialist. When there's a battlefield, choose a creature type. Whenever a creature of the chosen type dies, you may draw a card. That will be interesting. I also really like that card. They choose Rat. There you go. So, draw engine, bleed engine. They just need a sacrifice engine. This one does sacrifice a creature, but to really get going, they'll need more. Okay, that's it for the Marinara player. Considering using a braid on the Species Specialist, that card can be very, very good, especially if they get an engine going and just keep refilling their hand. Don't necessarily want them to do that. Assemble the Legion out of Hactos. Uh, unfortunately, Blue and Red can't really deal with enchantments. I mean, there's Chaos Warp and Reality Acid. If you really need to, Spine of Ishaw. Uh, it's just not terribly efficient. Over to Zareth. Main Phase 1, no land into play. I don't think they'll attack anywhere. Nope. Zareth all the way through their turn without a play. That's unfortunate. We get Jory N. Nice. Let's go ahead and play a mountain. And then we'll play Jory N. And then I think we'll just go ahead and cast a braid. And get rid of the species specialist now. Jory N will trigger. We get to draw a card. They sacrifice the species specialist to draw a card. All right. A braid is somewhat wasted, but we got rid of it regardless. Sulfur falls to our hand. A braid goes to the bin with no legal targets. And we'll pass it off. To the rats, Westville Abbey into play. Uh, I don't think we pack any land destruction. I mean, we probably pack a ghost quarter, but that's most likely it. Another sacrifice, Burglar Rat gets, I don't know, eaten? Nah, just gets sacked by Ayara. Toxic Deluge for three. Everything's gonna die. Sad face. All right, we have a trigger for afterlife, and we will put our commander back in the command zone. Oh well, Jorian usually doesn't survive just because it's a creature. It's just fragile that way. Swarm rats. Power is equal to the number of rats you control. That's it for the rat player. Assemble the legion will trigger, giving a one-one white, red and white. Sorry, hasty soldier creature token to Hactos. It's a good card. I'm considering it for uh, Gen myself. Just don't know what I want to do with that deck yet. Again, if you have any helpful suggestions, let me know. Blood Sworn Steward. Flying Commander Creatures you control get 2-2 and have haste. Oof. Yeah, I think this is a somewhat underrated card if you want to get your commander going real quick. So that could be good. Also, might put this in Gen. I haven't decided. Takotli Honor Guard. Creatures entering the battlefield don't cause abilities to trigger. All right, so they're really on that plan. Uh, which unfortunately means we are still really on trying to kill that creature. Over to Zareth. Let's see if they drop a land this turn. Ooh, still nothing out of the Zareth player. Sadness. Comes our turn, we get an island. Not exactly what we need right now. Let's go ahead and play Sulphur Falls, and I guess we'll pass it off to our opponents. We could do Mana Geyser into Explosion and do some damage and draw some cards. Uh, I really want to save Mana Geyser for something else, but I guess at this point... We could get, what, eek out a little bit more? No, we're going to have to wait on that. We'd need the blue mana anyway. Uh, second main phase, let's just get down a blocker with Nabon. Uh, I don't think anyone's going to kill it if they're paying attention to the uh, person that stops ETBs. And we'll pass it off. Over to the rat player. Four cards in hand, by the way. Let's see what they do with it. Tap an older mana for rat catcher. Fear at the beginning of your keep, you may search your library for a rat card, reveal it, and put it into your hand. Shuffle your library. That's pretty good. Assemble the Legion triggered. Two more tokens for Hactos. Hactos, the unscarred, coming down for that player. It will get 2-2, two, two, have haste, and the chosen number is 2. So it has protection from everything except CMC2. So we can block it. I guess that's good. Hactos on the attack, off into the rat player. That works for me. We also have the Blood Sworn Stewart off into the rat player. It has flying. Don't remember if I mentioned that or not. Damage is good. Rat player down to 26. 8 commander damage. Zareth still through their turn without a land drop. Mm. Comes our turn. We get Mystic Sanctuary. Uh, that's not helpful. Alright, let's go ahead and play an island. Unfortunately, we are one away from casting a decent explosion because we'll need that double blue after a mana geyser. So we just don't have anything. Let's go ahead and summon our commander. And at least have an additional blocker and i guess after that we'll just pass the turn leave up mana in case we really need to use expansion 
I'm going to try not to, though, so we can draw some cards. Over to the rat player's turn. Marinar, that is. Rat catcher will trigger it. They'll get any rat out of their deck and reveal it. Let's go ahead, open that window up. They get crypt rats. Ooh, that's the one that just murders all the creatures. Sad face. Uh, you can only spend black mana on it, but, I mean, it's essentially pestilence. Cabal coffers into play. Typical black deck trying to do the black things. Crypt rats coming down for the rat player. Uh, let's see. They could activate for four. Wipe the board except for Hactos. Uh, I don't know that they're going to do that necessarily. Crypt rats for three. There goes all our guys again. Hactos will be fine, and so are the Bloodsworn. So, Hactos probably still swinging into the rat player. We'll have to see how that goes. We'll put our commander back in the command zone. She will cost six. At this point, um, probably not going to recast her. We're probably going to do Mana Geyser, Explosion, draw a bunch of cards, deal damage to something, and call it a day. That's it for the rat player. Over to Hactos. Assemble the Legion will trigger again. You can't keep the Legion down. Hactos to the attack. Hactos and the Blood Sworn off into the Rat Player. We are taking some tokens. Yeah, that's fair. Damage is good. We're down to 33. Rat Player didn't take any blocks with that. They are down to 11, 16 commander damage. Over to Zareth. Mana Geode. All right, so at least it's a Mana Rock. It's something. They did get to scry one. Hopefully they are getting the land. All right, comes to our turn. We get Mizizium Mortars. Which is actually pretty good because it'll actually kill Hactos. It doesn't have protection from CMC2. And even on Overload, the Mizizium Mortars is CMC2. Let's go ahead and play Mountain. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of lands tapped right now. So at this point, I probably just want to cast the Mizizium Mortars and see where things go. So let's go ahead and do that. Although, we won't be able to kill Hactos later. Mizizium, go! All creatures are down. Let's pass it off. Uh, I would want Hactos to finish off the Meryl Nar player, but I also don't want it to necessarily be there to attack me in case they decide not to. Plus, it was really for getting rid of that tutoring rat catcher. Over to the rat player's turn. So, Mana Geyser, down here in our hand here. Three red red sorcery, add red for each tapped land your opponent's control. So, it is kind of opponent dependent. Hopefully, they're going to spell out a bunch of new stuff and we can get a lot of mana. Torment of Hellfire equals six. That's brutal. Uh, this is a card I have two of, but do not play ever, because if it doesn't win, it's just a giant pain in the butt. So in case for some reason you are the glorious few who are unfamiliar with this card, X Black Black Sorcery, repeat the following process X times. Each opponent loses three life unless that player sacrifices an online permanent or discards a card. Uh, we're going to just, we're going to lose 18 life. Uh, this time we will discard Mystic Sanctuary. It's not really going to help us right now. Alright, at the end of it, we lose 15 life. You do get the choice. You get to choose to discard or sacrifice something or take the life loss. So there is that option. Okay, over to Hactos. Assemble the Legion Musters again. Four hasty tokens. Land into play. Straight to combat. I guess they're not resummoning the commander just yet. We have soldiers on the attack, all into the rat player. That suits me just fine. Damage is good. Meryl Noir player down to seven. Still only 16 commander damage. Uh, I say only. One more attack uh, Hactos and they could be down. Hactos the Unscarred coming back down. We also have a lot of uh, tapped mana from our opponents. We just have to see if Xerath does anything on their turn. And Mana Geyser will be glorious. Command tower down for the Xerath player. All right, and I want to thank them particularly for sticking in the game. They had, uh, what, three, four turns without dropping a land? That's pretty, that's pretty brutal to go through that and sit through it. All right, still nothing has Zareth, but they do have mana, so that's nice. Comes our turn, we get Azet Signet. Unfortunately, we are one mana short of getting that down along with Mana Geyser and the Explosion. So, we're probably not doing that. Let's go ahead and do the Mana Geyser. We get 12 mana. Nice. Tap for double blue, and then we'll cast Explosion. Uh, I guess we could take out the Marinara player. Now nah, I think we'll hit Hactos player because... Uh, I don't want to. I want to be able to deal with them as efficiently as possible. All right, we'll put uh, six into it. I want some mana in case we draw something cool. All right, well we got Term of Expanse, Hushbringer, so a lot of blue stuff we can't cast. We do have Molten Echoes, which is nice, but that's not really going to do anything for us right now. Actually, I think let's go ahead and play the Molten Echoes. We haven't played it before. We do have three creatures in hand, so that could be nice. 
we will do wizard, and we'll pass it off. Over to Marinar. Four cards in hand, seven life, 16 commander damage. Cage Sun coming down for the rat player. I imagine they'll choose black. I love Cage Sun, except that it doesn't do anything when it comes into the battlefield, so again, one of those six drops that doesn't do anything. Mm. So unless you have a large abundance of mana already, I don't know about Cage Sun. Like in white and red, maybe. I don't know that black, green, or blue necessarily needs it. Stronghold Rats coming down. They have Shadow. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, each player discards a card. That's pretty good. So Shadow is something kind of like Horsemanship, where it can only, and it says it right here, this creature can block or be blocked only by creatures with Shadow. Over to Hactos' turn. By the way, I forgot to address this earlier. The chosen number randomly is four, as protection from everything except four, so Venzer will serve us very well. Assemble the Legion is going to trigger again. Hectos to the attacks. We are quite vulnerable, especially to all those soldier tokens. Hectos on the attack. Hectos directly into our face. All the tokens going into the rat player. That should kill the rat player, and we are going to take six commander damage. Oof. Damage is good. Down to 12, six commander for us. Meryl Nar minus two out of the game. End of turn, we have a response from Zareth. End of turn, Zareth coming down for that player. Flash. Nice. Their commander comes down for the first time. Zareth on the attack. Off into the Hactos player. I can agree with that kind of tactic. Four damage is good, and we have a trigger. Just combat damage to the player. You may put a permanent card from their graveyard onto the battlefield under their control. They are getting back the Battle Grace Angel. Oh, that's going to be good. It's going to be super good for him. Valgris Angel, 3 white, white, flying Exalted. Whenever a creature you control attacks alone and gains lifelink on the turn, it also gets that 1 1 bonus from Exalted. Comes our turn, we get Path of Ancestry. Uh, two lands that enter the battlefield tapped. What do we want? Probably the Path. Let's go ahead and play it. And then let's go ahead and play Baral's Expertise. Uh, let's get rid of Valgris Angel and a couple of tokens. I had hoped that maybe we could bounce the enchantment, but only those creatures are artifacts. And then we'll put Venzer down. We have a couple of triggers. Let's put Venzer on the stack, bounce the Assemble the Legion, and Molten Echoes will trigger. We have to pick which one we'll keep. We'll choose to keep the original. We have another trigger for Venzer. Let's go ahead and bounce the Hactos. Okay, and then we'll just play the Azet Signet. Not much else to do at this point. And we'll pass the turn. So that brought up an interesting query, I guess you could say. So, Venzer coming into play, even though he's a legendary creature, will trigger again as a token. So, I once asked if my Timir Omnath, when it comes into play, if I did Rive Replication, would it trigger, and all those elementals coming into play, would they deal damage? So, I think what happens there, as a difference, is it also has to be there on resolution for the ability to resolve, whereas this one is one and done kind of deal. But let me know in the comments what you think about that, and if I am wrong that it's, you know, it has to be there on resolution, I'd love to be able to burn out my opponents with a right on top of my Omnath. That would be great. Assemble the Legion coming back down for the Hackdos player. Yeah, that would have been my choice. We have a response as Zareth. Didn't say please. Counter target spell. It's control mills three cards. I do love that card just for the name. Linval, Keeper of Silence. Activated abilities of creatures your opponents control can't be activated. I once designed a Linval EDH deck. Uh, it was very mean. I did not build it. All the soldiers immediately into our face. Yeah, okay. Uh, we'll block and kill one. We take six. It won't take much more to kill us at this rate. Unfortunately for us. End of turn, we have Soul Shatter. Each month sacrifices a creature or planeswalker with the highest converted mana cost among them that they control. That's a nice card. I don't remember seeing that in my Zendikar, but that might be something I want to buy someday. Zareth to the attack. Let's see where they send it. Into the Hectus player, the attack goes. Alright, they'll be down to 5 with 8 commander damage from Zareth. Zareth will trigger again. Let's see what goodies they'll get back this time. They're getting back the Immortal Sun. Lots of hate pieces in Hectus. Kinda like it. Black Bloom Rogue. Lots of uh, bubbly in the picture. Menace Rogue gets 3-0 as long as your opponent has 8 or more cards in their graveyard. Uh, we do. We have 10. So it is currently a 
Comes our turn, we get Curse of the Swine. That could be pretty good. Let's go ahead and play Terramorphic Expanse, and we'll crack it for an island. Unfortunately, our commander still costs six, so I don't think that's happening anytime soon. Let's go ahead and play uh, probably Gadwick the Wizened. We'll play it where X equals two. We get to scry. Past in Flames, is that going to help us? We do have Mazizian Mortars in there, but I don't know if we have mana to cast it, and we don't really have anything else. Um, no, I think we'll put it on bottom. All right, we have some triggers. Gadwick on the stack first. Let's get a token. We'll keep the original Gadwick. Now we get to draw four cards. Nifty. Oop, no, we only get to draw two. Interesting. So Gadwick also has to be there for it to resolve, I suppose. We get Tiburon Lumia and Comet Storm. Oh, those would have been so good a turn ago. Why? Okay, well, not much to do here. So we essentially just need to kill Zareth's things off for a second here so we don't die to them because we can also just die to the tokens probably. Uh, but I think at this point, maybe we just wait, keep up Void Mage Husher, block some stuff, and hope we live. Over to Hectos. Four cards in hand, down to five, eight commander. Let's see what they do with it. It might be their last turn. Balefire Liege. That's going to make things a lot bigger. Uh-oh. And we do not have mana to counter that, kill it, or any of that stuff. Sad face. We can't Void Mage Husher to block it, though. Balefire Liege got one reprint in a Plane Chase deck, and then finally another reprint in uh, Mystery Boosters. So I don't know how much it is right now, but it's a pretty good Boros card. We have a Chaos Warp on the Commander Xerath. Uh, Balefire Liege will trigger it. We're going to be taking three damage. That's unfortunate. Uh, unfortunately, Hushbringer only does activate abilities, so there's nothing we can counter there. Chaos Warped into Dusk Mantle Operative. Can't be blocked by creatures of power four or greater. So that'll be good for him. Uh, the soldiers are almost there. Hack those to the attacks. We have at least one soldier into us. Uh, two soldiers. Yep, that's going to be lethal unless we block. And we will in fact block, but first we have to cast our Void Mate Husher so we can uh, survive. Gadwick, we get to tap something. Um, sure, the Balefire Liege. It doesn't keep it tapped, so <laughs> that's uh, too bad. All right, we get some more triggers. All right, let's go to blocks. Uh, I guess at this point we just throw the Void Mage in front of it and have a blocker up for Xerath just in case. The Void Mages get voided. Over to Xerath's turn, the Immortal Sun will trigger. They'll get an additional card. We have the Blackthorn Rogue, or Black Bloom Th Rogue rather, off into us. That is unfortunate. Down we go, negative three. Okay, well, let's see if Zareth can close out the deal. Being left alone is a way to victory. Anticipate out of the Zareth player. So for our next turn, had we survived, I would have probably used Comet Storm, killed the Hakdos player, killed the Black Bloom Rogue, and hope for the best, I guess. Massacre Girl comes into play. Uh, I don't think it's going to kill anything, though. They would have had to have killed the Liege first. Over to Hactos's turn. Three cards in hand, five life left, eight commander damage. Hactos the Unscarred. Balefire Liege will trigger for both of its abilities. They gain three life, and they can deal three damage to target player or planeswalker. It has been errated. If we look over here, you can see it. The original printings all said just player, but then when they redid the rules and the, the wording, it was errated to play say player or planeswalker. Hactos into play, chosen number is three, so CMC protection from everything except three. Battle Grace Angel is going to come into play. Balefire Leech triggers again. Hactus player will gain three life. Hactus attacking with only one token. It does get exalted in lifelink, so it will be a 4 4. But I figured they would have swarmed them with just about everything by now, but they do have four cards in hand over on Zareth's side, so this might be the more cautious, actually better play. Zareth takes the four with no blocks. Four life is gained to the Hactos player. Base camp into play for Xerath. Okay, barely saw that. We had an inscription of insight come in into the stack from the Zarath player. I don't even know what they chose. That's it for Zarath. Over to Hactos's turn, three cards in hand. So it does look like they at least bounce the Balefire Liege. Let's check out the modes here. Return up to two target creatures to their owner's hand, and they did not kick it based on the mana they tapped, so. 
Balefire Leech went back to the hand, and what else? Balefire Leech coming back down. Drown in the Lock, a response from Zareth. Counter target spell with converted mana cost less than or equal to the number of cards in its controller's graveyard. Their graveyard currently had 12, so Balefire is countered. <laughs> Hactos immediately to combat. They do exalted triggers. Black Bloom on the intercept. It will be able to block it because it is CMC3. Hactos down, Black Bloom down. Hactos player did gain 7 life out of that combat though, and that might pad their life total enough to withstand a barrage from Zareth if they ever get one going. Thrawn Dynamo coming down for the Hactos player. That'll help get it back out. Omen of the Dead flashed in at end of turn. When it enters the battlefield, return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Something I'm considering for Gen. They got back the Black Bloom. Spinning Wheel into play for the Zareth player. It's another mana rock, but can also tap down a creature. Massacre Curl coming down. This time it is going to trigger. All those soldier tokens are going bye bye. There are the triggers. It's going to wipe the board, except for Massacre Girl. Black Bloom Road coming back down. Over to Hactos' turn. So, Hactos, unless they have something cool to play, you know, besides their commander, they have about two turns to live. Hactos back down for that player. The random chosen number is three. Ooh, Enlightened Tutor for the Hactos player. That's interesting. Let's see what they get with it. Spear of Hiliod. That will give Hactos 1 1, and whenever a creature hits them, they can pay 1 1 white, tap this card, and destroy it. Over to Zareth. Five cards in hand, 14 life. Uh, Hactos is in a really bad spot, I'd wager. They do have protection from everything except CMC3, although the Black Bloom is CMC3, and if we look at it, it hits for six and has Menace anyway. So, still a four turn clock, if a little slow, but again, now five cards in hand after the draw. Zareth probably has something. We have Gateway Sneak into play. So whenever a gate enters the battlefield under your control, it can't be blocked, and when it does combat damage to a player, draw a card. We also have Blood Burglar into play. 3-3 three, three, lifelink, as long as it's your turn, it has lifelink. Then we have a Fairy Miscreant into play. When enters the battlefield, if you control another creature named Fairy Miscreant, draw a card. They don't, and it's a rogue and it's EDH, but flying rogue. Off to the attacks, Massacre Girl and the Black Bloom, which has the menace. Let's see what Hactos does about it. Hactos, no blocks. They could have blocked Massacre Girl and live, so that was interesting. Uh, they are down to 11 and Ink Commander. Over to Hactos, just drew the Spear of Heliod. Let's see if they play it. They do indeed. Unfortunately, it's not as good as Machiko Kunda. Yes, it gives 1 1, so it's a much better Glorious Anthem because of the ability, but you have to wait to be damaged and then pay a cost. Machiko will immediately kill things, although at this life toll, I don't know that either one of those cards are going to matter. Hactos immediately on the attack, swinging for the 7 Commander. It's really their only chance. We still don't know what other card they have in hand. I don't remember if it was the creature that got bounced or not, so they might have a plan. I don't know. Comeuppance would be nice. We have a block out of the gateway sneak. It is CMC3, so it will be able to block. And Hactos takes an arrow to the knee. Well, I guess the Achilles tendon. Second main phase, Deafening Claron. Uh, let's see. Deafening Claron does three damage to each creature. Each creature you control gains lifelink tone to turn. 3 damage to all creatures, 2 survivors, Massacre Girl, and the Black Bloom Rogue. Over to Zareth's turn. Zareth kinda has this in the bag, they just have to attack. Hactos has no cards in hand. Shimmer of Possibility coming from Zareth. Look at the top 4 cards of your library, put one of them in your hand, and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Magnifying Glass coming down, it's another mana rock. It also has the ability 4 tap and investigate, so 6 you draw a card, so... At that point, play Dreamstone Hedron, I suppose. We have attacks. All of it over into the Hactus player. This should be game. There it is. Zareth player wins the game. See, sometimes you just need to be left alone. I win a lot of games that way. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the deck. Okay, here's the deck. Like I said, not much changed. All I took out was the, was it Shark Typhoon? And put in Curse of the Swine. That was really the only change I did. Uh, as far as the deck's been playing, I do like it better, like I said, from the last video, from the last series, anyway. I do think it's stronger. Tiborn Lumia, always an all-star. Uh, a couple of combos in the deck to win the game. More removal. A uh, bunch more card draw, but it still seems to be 
a little bit lacking. I really just don't think necessarily that this deck without some major upgrades, possibly some expensive upgrades, would be anything better than like a uh, six, maybe a seven top end if you want to use numbers. It's definitely a casual deck, so I don't think anybody needs to ever fear a Kaza Royal Chaser unless you get into some infinite untapped shenanigans. So I think that's the only way really it'll do something. But I mean, then you have better things like maybe Mizzix and uh, just Mono Blue sometimes, you know? As far as upgrades to the deck, that uh, was it. The Immortal Sun might actually be really good. It provides extra card draw, it does provide a buff to our wizards, which usually can save our wizards from some kinds of removal. So that's very nice. Shuts off Planeswalkers and our spells cost one less to cast. So if you need a good six drop in this deck, I would consider the Immortal Sun. So here's the deck. If you saw any cards that you saw in this video that you want to own in paper, sealed product coming up. Commander Legends should be coming out in about a week, and so we can cover those commanders finally. Yes. Uh, or sealed product. Or sorry, if you want sleeves. Sorry, I got sidetracked. Very excited about Commander Legends. Uh, go ahead and consider using the TCG Player affiliate in the link below. It'll help out the challenge. doesn't cost you anything extra. So hopefully by uh, Tuesday for that video series, we'll begin a brand new Legends Commander, Commander Legends, can't even speak, very excited, hope I get your lock, really want to build that, but we'll see what we get, we'll start on those commanders, and if you have any suggestions, because there are so many Legends in the set, let me know in the comments below, and if we can't cover it in the original series before the next set comes out, we can go back and revisit, there's just going to be so much out of the set, and I'm really excited, until then, I'll see you around.